Yes, you guys, welcome back to the player ratings video after our epic comeback win against Man City today. We can thank goals from both Hakim Ziyech and Marcus Alonso for, you know, helping produce this incredible win today. And for me, the most important takeaway from the game today is that psychological advantage that I now feel we have over Man City. We knocked them out of the FA Cup, ending any hopes of a famous quadruple. We've beaten them today, stopping them from officially winning the Premier League title. Can Tuchel make it three wins out of three come the end of the season, you guys? All I can say is right now, I feel extremely excited, hopeful and confident from this team that Tuchel has created. So if you guys are happy right now, if you're gassed by the performance, if you love the videos, love the content, then smash that like button, you guys. Help me get over 2,000 likes and of course, interact with the comment section too. But now, we kick things off and we start things by giving a score to our manager today. Now with Tuchel, every time we see his lineups, I get excited. I love the thinking behind it. And today, Tuchel made the right decisions. I love, you know, his coaching methods, this whole thing about encouraging the whole squad to compete and improve by, you know, sharing out more minutes to more squad players in the team. I feel like when you get to the closing stages of seasons like this, where if you're luckily in the position to be winning things, then, you know, you get like an extra boost if you have more consistency from your entire squad. We use rotation players today in Gilmore, Alonso, etc, etc, yet we were the better team again. And it's just an incredible reflection on, you know, Tuchel as a manager, his tactics, his methods, and everything he does today, you guys. You know, from uh, how he sets the teams up to his in-game decisions, the subs, he knows when to make the right subs at the right time. He has every opponent pattern, you guys. So today, you guys, I'm gonna be scoring our manager an 8.5 out of 10. We now move on to the outfield players, and we start with Edouard Mendy. Now, he was quite quiet today, which was surprising because Man City had many attacking players in the field today in their back three setup system they use but he didn't really get tested too much the most decisive involvement from him today was his part in that you know incredible penalty miss Maguero. uh mendy kept himself big firm it was like he almost knew that Aguero was gonna try and attempt something just stupid and you know, that intuition paid off for him, and I think that's like one of the first penalties this season that Mendy has saved. I'd say that the only weak thing about his game I've seen so far this season has been his penalty, so it's nice to even see Mendy now making these clutch saves. On top of this, you guys, I feel like Mendy has to get more credit when it comes to his passing out from the back. Now, I say this all the time, but we spent over 70 million on Kepa, who is supposed to be known as a sweeper keeper, ball playing keeper, who really isn't. But with Mendy, he is really the complete goalkeeper who can do everything that you'd want. And for that reason, I'm gonna be scoring him a 7.5 out of 10. Now we move on to the center backs and we start with Aspilicueta. And I have to say, I mean, I feel like for me, he was our man of the match today. Um, of course, you know, other players will take the headlines for their, you know, the moments they produce, of course, more exciting. But if you actually deep Aspie's performance today, if you see and really focus on the, the details of what he provided and produced for the team, uh, you know, forget the assist he made. You know, look at how he defended today. He constantly knows when to push up and close a man down. You know, you, you can't, once Aspie is behind you, once he's homed in on you, he's behind you trying to get that ball, That that's it. That is his ball. And just seeing how he plays overall, I thought he showed some exceptional pieces of like great composure and, and passing today. Um, I thought he was very good going forwards. He provides so much supportive steel to our back line as well. And you know, he really plays any and every game to the same standard and the same caliber. So for that reason, I have to score Aspie today an 8.5 out of 10. We now move on to Andreas Christensen. And you know, I'm not gonna be down marking him like to a crazy level for his involvement for Man City's first goal. You know, that was quite unlucky. I think the way the ball just bounced in that area, you know, he had Jesus literally right behind him. Uh, you know, in one of those moments where you're off balance, you're on one leg having to try and, you know, put the ball away somewhere, accidents are going to happen and it doesn't take away from what has been an incredible season for Andreas Christensen. Uh, even before that involvement, before his unfortunate injury, which I'm hoping won't be too severe, you know, he still provides that same assuredness. You know, I, I feel like he's definitely got stronger. His passing is so crisp from the back as well. And, 
You know he's becoming more authoritative, which is what you want to see. But for today, I'm going to be scoring him a 6 out of 10. And to end with the back three, we move on to Antonio Rudiger. And I'm saying it, you guys, but for me, one of the best defenders in the Premier League this season. Uh, it's a criminal that he's not getting enough credit for just how good he's been playing consistently throughout the season. And again, today was yet another example of the brilliance that has been Antonio Rudiger. Um, you know, I just love what he does from like an offensive point of view with his passes. He plays ridiculous passes from the back. He balls over the top to find the, the left wing back, to find Timo Werner, to find Pulisic. Uh, very impressive again today. And I'm going to be scoring him a 7.5 out of 10. And now we turn towards the wing backs and we move on to Reese James. Now I have to say maybe for like a few, I don't know, maybe 10, 20 minutes of the game, he was a tiny bit rusty, which is understandable. You know, I think the, the thing with Reese here yeah, is that he's been so good. He's been so consistent that we take it for granted at times and we forget that he's only 20 years old. As this game kept going on, Reese kept going, tightening up the gears and tightening up the gears. Uh, Mendy at times was looking like a fool, couldn't keep up with him. You know, Reese James played some exceptional balls from the area, his link up play. Uh, he, he knows when to step in field to take a man away. He knows how to create those overloads. That is such an important aspect. And on top of that, he's someone you can pass to when you're under pressure. I'm going to be scoring him an eight out of 10. And we now move on to our match winner in Marcus Alonso. Now, today, Alonso is bringing out a bit of the sauce, you guys. Um, you know, Alonso was showing some nice little bits of close control in the final thirds. Um, of course, his overlapping runs were always good. I, did, I do wish that he had pace if Alonso had pace I think he'd basically be Gosens from Atalanta to be honest and we're seeing how that really helps his game out but you know with Alonso today at times there was frustration due to some poor decision making in the final third which I am gonna slyly slyly score him down for but again forgetting that match winner it takes things back up again and today I'm gonna be scoring him a 7.5 out of 10. And now you guys we turn towards midfields and we're gonna start with Billy Gilmore because for me um you know Gilmore has had a good season in the sense that when you give him game time when does he ever play badly when does he ever flop or waste his chances it doesn't happen he always makes positive influence uh, in the game in the team and this today was another example of what he does. Uh, of course, it's hard to play against, you know, teams of this caliber and you are going to have one or two tricky moments. Uh, you know, one or two times his pass was a little bit sloppy, a bit too short, you know, a bit too behind. One thing that Gilmore has is ridiculous mentality. Um, you know, he puts those things behind him. He doesn't care. He doesn't focus on them and he really looks to assert himself in the game. He looks to express himself and show what he can do. And you know, in the second half, him and Kante worked well to really win that midfield battle back. And Gilmore was starting to dictate the, the, the game, dictate the midfield. So I thought he was passing around Rodri exceptionally well, really showing Rodri what he was supposed to be doing. I'm going to be scoring Gilmore a 7.5 out of 10. And now we end things with Angolo Kante. And Kante, um, again, he played such a, an impressive part in helping us win that midfield battle back in the end. But it was just... You know, more of the brilliance that you expect from Kante. Um, you know, every time he wins that second ball, he goes out to press the man, close the man down. Um, he creates an attack. How many times does he carry that ball, drive forward to create something as well? It helps us out time and time again, especially when you have a front three like this that really play even better when you know, you're creating uh, opportunities for them in the transition. But, um, you know, today Kante had to get subbed off for natural reasons because we can't overcook him in such a important part right now. So today, I'm going to be scoring Kante a 7 out of 10. We now move on to the attacking players and let's start with Hakim Ziyech. Um, I know that some people may be a bit frustrated with his performance, but you know, that is kind of how Ziyech is as a player in the sense that, you know, you don't expect like a consistent supply of like brilliance every time he's on the ball, but you know, you leave him there because he has that individual brilliance to make decisive things happen at the right time. Um, you know, I, I thought like he was looking to play some nice uh, through balls in this game. We were seeing his delivery from outside the box in those half spaces, um, putting some good whip with his crosses inside the box. Um, he was quite unlucky at one time not to find uh, Pulisic. He was looking to find from, uh, you know, from a very deep position. But, you know, 
I was seeing and sensing that threat that he was bringing. I was seeing the positions he was picking up that he was getting unmarked. I think maybe Pep's plan of having Rodri by himself as a CDM just did not work in this game today. DX finding himself in dangerous positions was going to, you know, play a part in helping to decide this game. And the goal he took today, exceptional. I mean, he was testing secret shots outside the book. So, again, the goal he scored was exceptional. I'm going to be scoring Ziek 7.5 out of 10. Now, moving on to Christian Pulisic hands. I thought Pulisic had a good game. Not like amazing, great, nothing like that. But this was not a bad game anywhere at all. This was a good game. Um, I thought he looked quite sharp at times. I feel like maybe he was let down by final balls at times as well. I thought his impact really grew more in the second half when we were starting to play in front of Man City, forcing them back in their own half. Then he was able to find himself in good pockets of space, looking to receive on the half turn, drive where he could, increase our tempo, looking to play one twos, all the really positive plays that you would want to see. So, you know, this was a, a good game from him and I'm going to score him a seven out of 10. And now to end things with Timo Werner. Now, of course, I'm going to say the positive first, and that was the assist he played right at the end to find Marcus Alonso. Uh, that's what Werner's pace can bring. That's the opportunities he can bring for us, and we saw we benefit from that. But at the same time, from a personal perspective, it did feel like, oh, uh, you know, some of the runs were really poor, finding himself in offside positions that he shouldn't have found himself in. Um, two in particular just were criminal. One in the end where Jorginho tried to find him. Jorginho probably saw that the entire time, thinking, why the hell are you not alert? Why have you not bent your run? Look to come on side and look to drive into this space that's open up. And, you know, that is frustrating. But at the same time, you know, it's easy for me and, and all of us to say this when, as a striker, you need to feel that you can consistently and confidently rely upon service from your teammate. Regardless of his, like, personal influence, he still has an impact in the game. And today, I'm going to be scoring him a 6.5 out of 10. We now end things with the subs, you guys. And I felt the subs had very impactful parts in the game today. Uh, we start with Kurt Zuma. You know, a slight rust in the opening five minutes, understandable. You know, coming straight into a game in the second half when he had, like, no real warm-up. It happens, but, wow, this guy, I mean... Pfft, He's been great this season. Great this season. Even when he gets game time on the two call, he still has great games. And that last ditch tackle he made on Raheem Sterling, that reminded me, I know I had a flashback years back when we played a game against Liverpool in the Carabao Cup where, you know, Zuma made, like back when he was first making his name, made a similar tackle against Sterling. And I remember the fan base going crazy in the stadium and that's when the hype for Zuma really started. And he still has it in him. He's always had it, and as I keep stressing, I don't think we need to sign any defenders when before this season have proved how brilliant they all are. So he's going to score a 7.5 out of 10. Moving on to Jorginho, he came off for Kante, and you know, I felt like him and Gilmore really just were just keeping the ball for fun. At times, um, you know, he works really great for the team, hard for the team, stepped up so much, and he will get a standard 6 out of 10. And to end things with Callum hudson -Odoi, Um, again, the cameo he had, final 20 minutes, the involvement, he had a goal ruled off for offside, he had a great short save for Anderson. Uh, he was, uh, he set the move, created the move basically for the winner, playing a great reverse ball with his outside of his foot to find Werner in behind and then, you know, was in the place for the Werner cutback only for Alonso to get there ahead of him. But, you know, he looked confident. He was receiving on the half turn, turning, driving, showing the things you want to see. And, you know, Circle's reaction off of the game, really praising him, looking happy and obviously talking about some tactical aspects of the game. You know, maybe we have to calm down and, and think more in the long term for Hudson Odoi. So he's going to score a 7 out of 10. And on that note, you guys, there you have it. That was the player ratings video after the, uh, a crazy comeback in what has been a, a crazy, mad, mad season. But on that note, you guys, I'm Nini FC. This is Blue Lions TV. I'll catch you all later with some more videos. Cool.